That is true. You are our comforter. He, he, he had 
look so high. The Bible says that the moment he came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It was a question. Now, what I want to tell each and every one of us is, if we have never fought a battle in your life, you are, not, you are nobody important. If you have never come face to face with demons, just like Paul was saying, that I have fought with the demon of Ephesus, you don't still not know where you are going to a life. If people have not criticized you, if your life has not come to a place where you don't even know how to figure it out, you're not yet really the man that you want to be. Somebody hear me. Tell your neighbor, take down your last enemy. Now, let me also remind you, it becomes impossible to fight an enemy you don't know. It becomes almost impossible to win a war of the enemy. You don't know how he fights. You don't know how he operates. One of the things that guarantees your victory is that you know your enemy's pattern. You know how to avoid it. You know how to take him there. And if you cannot detect that, you will be too shocked to find out that you can take him down no matter what you do. Goliath was so prepared for this battle. He knew how to defend himself. But the Bible says that when the stone landed was the very place, he did not protect. Somebody hear me. How can you win when you don't know your enemy? Now let me also tell you, we easily detect enemies that come out of our destinies. Because it is a face-to-face -face confrontation. We can easily find out an enemy who doesn't want our welfare. Because we can detect he wants us to go down. Because he is working against us. So he is easily detected because he is working against us. Ask your neighbor how to find your enemy. One of the first things you must do if you're going to win the battle over your life is to discover who the enemy is. Is. Ask your neighbor, have you found your enemy? Hallelujah. Amen. Most men are fighting in life, fighting wrong enemies, fighting wrong people, fighting people that are even supposed to help them in life. They went war against them, only to find out five years later that the last man I killed was necessary, not the man calling. Paul came to a time in his life, a man called John Mack could no longer work with him in the ministry. They parted away, but he allowed him to stay. He came to a time that he rebounds back and said, get me John Mack, I need him right now in my ministry. Don't kill an enemy that you will need tomorrow, because he is not the true enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 For some of us that doesn't really know politics very well, I've forgotten the African country that did an election. And the incumbent didn't want to go. Why? The incoming president, the opposition, just won the election. And there was war. But the thing was, when the coming president defeated the former president, he didn't kill him. And, and, and I met someone and said, why did he just kill him? And someone told me, he said, constitutionally, you need to sign that the coming president have taken over from him. In other words, if you will eliminate him, he will not be the legitimate president that he wants to be. Because right now he took power by force. Because the outgoing president did not sign that he handed over to him. Action never had to found your enemy. Because if you have not located him, you will always mix up battle. You will always use what you are supposed to use to fight this battle, to fight another battle, only for you to be confronted with this same battle. And you find out that there is no people for you to use. The biggest thing to do is to discover who the enemy is. Amen. Amen. This man said to Jesus, there is something that I am looking for. How do I get it? When Jesus told him, he said, I have kept that right from my childhood. In other words, I have fought with all manner of life, way of life, and I have kept myself pure. I have kept myself. I am right now based on woman and, and woman ideology. I am qualified to enter anywhere that I want to enter. But deep inside of me, I still feel that there is still something missing. 
you'll be shocked to find out that some of you have been fighting wrongly. Some of you have engaged the wrong people. If I am where I am going and I detain that you are after me, I will come also after you because I will call you an enemy. Jesus says, uh, whoever that is not with us is against us because you are working against the very thing that I am working for. If we are not working for one master, we are not friends. Amen. Amen. As your neighbor, have you found your enemy? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What about people who, when you discover that you have a destiny, you find out that all hell will be let loose. All hell will be let loose. You will see criticism and attack. Some of us, born in our finances, born in our marriages, born in our way of life, born in our residence, born in everything that has to do with us, we are fighting battles in different fronts. We are confronted with the very enemy that says that you cannot achieve the very thing you know that God said that you ought to achieve this. And some of us, we are pulling all our energy to fight this battle. I'm going to be too quick and too short because we have some things to pray about. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, the Bible also made us to understand that Jesus came performing all manner of miracles. There was no enemy that stood before Jesus that did not go down before him. Paul also fought, and he even encouraged Paul Timothy and said, fight the fight of good faith. Make sure you detect who the enemy is and fight him. Amen. Amen. I said, have you found your enemy? I found your enemy. But I was too shocked that when Jesus came to Gethsemane, it was not a battle against the external force. It was a battle within himself. It was a battle that has to do with him. How do you fight yourself? How do you defeat yourself to rejoice and say that you have gotten victory? And yet it is a victory over your very self. Ask your neighbor, how do you fight yourself? How do you fight yourself? The easiest enemy to fight is the enemy that is coming from the way outside. Oh, come on. We can just wake up this morning and say, today we are going to kill Satan and every demon. But what about if you wake up today and find out that you have to defeat yourself today? Jesus kneeled down and said, Father, if you ask me right now, I will say, let this cup pass over me. Amen. Amen. But hear me. What Jesus wanted and what the will of God was, they were from the two opposite sides. Right now, the will of God was confronted with it. who Jesus was. How do you fight yourself? Paul had deal, dealt with so many things. But in the book of Romans chapter 7, Paul said, I found out that there is a force within me that it's time I want to do something else. I found myself doing another thing. And he shouted, who would deliver me from this body of sin? Paul was looking for who would deliver him from himself. The most dangerous enemy is yourself. Take down your last enemy. He's not from the outside. He is on the way, on the inside. This man said to Jesus, I have kept everything. But Jesus said, you are still missing something. He said, sell everything you have. The man did only discover I have fought with demons from outside. But the man went back side. He couldn't fight himself. And the Bible said he went out feeling sad. Only to find out shockingly that he was asked, can you defeat yourself? Ask your neighbor, can you defeat yourself? Can you defeat yourself? Many of us, that's where we are right now. Buried in the conflict between us and the destiny that God has already planned for us. We can fight enemies from the outside because when we defeat them, we can celebrate victory. But who do you go to to rejoice and say, I have overcome myself? Who do you go to to say, come and rejoice with me in church because I just defeated myself? Better what people will think that you are mad. 
and to wash us from all unrighteousness and make us whiter than snow. Father, show grace. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is no longer on the outside. The Bible is not on the inside. No one that God said that my job will begin in the church because that's where the battle is. Hello. Hi. Ask your neighbor, have you found the enemy? I you found the enemy. I know the answer will no longer be the same. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you know why? When I saw the prayer that Jesus prayed, I was shocked. He has done so many things. The Bible says that why even bringing people who are demon possessed, the moment they see Jesus, they will scream and fall. The Bible says that the demon possessed man that nobody go past where he was. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and knelt to them and said, Son of God, why have you come to torment us before our time? <coughs> when I saw Jesus kneeling there saying, Father, if you ask me, if you ask me, I will decide otherwise. But right now I find out that what I want in your will and not in agreement. Is somebody here? Yeah. Paul, the Bible says that handkerchief from Paul will heal people and cast away demons. Paul, everything, when Paul comes in, even the Bible says that Paul was preaching and the young man fell from one story building and died. And Paul just carried him and he came back to life. I found that Paul was battling with the issue of his own life. Paul could pray and things would happen somewhere. But when the battle came to the domain of Paul, and God was telling him, Paul, there is a conflict between you and yourself. Paul only shouted, Who, who, who can deliver me? Because he found that he couldn't do anything. For himself. Is somebody here me? I have a problem. And I find that my biggest problem is not in my wife. It's not in my husband. Hello. Everybody listen to me. Let, let me give home. Praise God. Praise God. The very thing that will take me down can be my wife. She doesn't have the power. Your husband doesn't have what it takes to take you there. There is no friend outside that God has given the capacity to decide when you succeed and when you fail. But there is a man inside of you that if you don't defeat him, he will decide your fate. This one, no matter whether you like it or not, he can single-handedly decide it. Amen. Amen. When God spoke to the children of Israel and said, when you enter into this land, kill everybody you see. Show no mercy. Nothing in a child don't allow them to leave. Only for some tribe to come in and negotiate them with the people there and say, let's settle together. You don't fight me. I don't fight you. And God told them, you see these people you have left? Forever they were going to be a thorn in your flesh. Forever. The enemy from the outside is not going to have the capacity to destroy you. But you see this thorn in your flesh. It will torment you until the day you die. We carry in us a poison that can also destroy us. Oh my God. And the poison is still me. That's why most of us that have found our ego and have built our flesh to the extent that the flesh decides whatever we do. Amen. I want to tell all that you are going to lose it all when you don't have the capacity to fight anymore. Some of us, we have parents who are 70, who are 85. They can't hustle no more. Amen. Amen. My father, no matter how strong he may look, he is 70 something. There are things he can do, not because he doesn't want to do it, just because the capacity is no longer there for him to do it. His energy can no longer carry him. There are things he can do anymore. Why? He has passed the stage. There are battles he can fight right now. Amen. Amen. He said, Jesus, what must I do? 
The most important thing right now to this man was eternal life. Eternal life. He knew he has gotten wealth. Probably his, he was a married man with children. Is somebody understanding me? He has his own business. It was flourishing. He pays his light. He was somebody who loved God and have always walked with God. He knew what, who Jesus was. He only came to inquire, how do I get the remaining thing in my life? And Jesus told him, don't commit adultery. Don't commit murder. Don't be a false witness. Amen. Amen. Love not only your father and your mother. And the man turned around and said, Jesus, this I have done. What is remaining? Jesus said, one thing. And I'm sure the man was eager to hear. He said, tell me the thing. And Jesus said, sell everything you have. And you, you come and follow me. The man looked around and decided, the other side of me can be here without my wealth. The entire life that I came to ask for, the other part of me cannot pay the price to get it. This man, this man, the father, he has achieved everything that he thought that a successful man will achieve. But the most important thing to him, he lost it. The Bible says he went outside. And Jesus looked at him and turned around and told the people, he said, how difficult it will be to those people who cannot defeat themselves to step into the kingdom of God. Eternal life. No matter what we are going to achieve here, if you don't defeat your flesh, our kind of body, we are far away. We are going to sing in the choir and yet end up in hell. We are going to have wonderful wife, wonderful children, and yet end up where? In hell. We are going to have good careers, good business, good IQ, good wisdom, and yet the most important thing in our lives will be lost because we could not defeat ourselves. Oh yes, the gospel of today is all about God the magician, God the giver, God the, the come, whatever. God is all here to supply your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Yes, he will. But what about after God supplying all your needs? You lose eternal life. The Bible says that God allows his rain to fall both on the rich and the poor, the slave and the free. But hear me, there is something that is still very important that you will make the decision by yourself. You can be faithful in your time and yet you will lose eternal life, which is the most important thing. Amen. 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 This is a generation. I will not fail to repeat a testimony that I told my teachers yesterday. Amen. And, I, and I'm going to round up with this. Praise God. Hallelujah. It was about a, a man of God, a minister, uh, Pastor Adeboye. He said, they have this conference they normally do. And the capacity of people that normally come each time was 10 million. And while he was praying, he said, God, show them, reveal something to him. I was telling him, out of the 10 million people that are gathered in this conference, if, if I am to show up right now, only five of them are ready. And the man of God will quick to conclude, me, my wife, and some other people like God say, no, you know. You know. Your wife, yes. One widow in the church, one choir master, two other people in the congregation. But you are not qualified if I show up right now. It would be so shocking. He, he came out and was saying, if he dropped dead before that day, people would have brought his casket to the altar and said, behold the most humble minister we have in Africa. Ha! In fact, he is going into the, the bedroom of God. That's where his place will be. Only for him to be asked to step aside. Praise God. Hallelujah. Christianity have led preparing people to go to heaven into preparing people to become rich. Hello? Hi. Preparing people to become what? Rich. Come and God will bless you, make you rich. Supply everything you want. God will heal you. 
Some of us here, God may not heal us. Listen, I want to tell you an ugly truth. Some people will not be healed while they are still living in this earth. Some people will not have all their needs met while they are still on this earth. We are preaching a sermon of easy jolly. Come on. Some of what we showed up and said, it is God, it is mandatory that God will bless me. Let me tell you, you don't have such right. God can decide not to do so. Paul, this man is powerful. How powerful he was. He went to God and said, God, there is a tongue in my flesh. Take it out. And God said, leave the tongue to be there. All you need is my grace and is already there. Leave the sickness there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If you're too successful and you miss eternal life, you are the worst of all failures. Because where you are expected, every money that God gave to you was for you to make it to eternal life. Every good wife, every good husband, every, every sermon that you hear is supposed to prepare you for where? For eternal life. But when it turns around, you find out that some people doesn't even want Jesus to come back again. Because this world has suddenly become too comfortable and too sweet. And yeah, when we were growing up, when you go to a marriage where people are having wedding, the, first, the, 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 the man officiating will say, do you think this wife or this woman, this man or this woman, for richer, for poorer, for sickness, in health, till death, do not spare? But I found out that pastors have gradually twisted Right now, you, you don't say for water, for richer, and for health. Amen. Amen. Because that's the world we want to live in. We are nothing who really shake us anymore. The fact is, there will come a season that you will never believe that you have even known God before. There will come a time that you will look around and ask God, are you sure you're still on my side? Because I can't feel you anymore. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, will you defeat yourself to eternal life? <laughs> How could this man, the thing that he had desired so much, that he had left his wealth, he had left his money, and came to Jesus and said, How, what do I do to step in here? Only for Jesus to tell him what he needed to do. He only turned around and walked away, feeling sad. Somebody hear me. God has already blessed some people. And there is nothing you can do about it. God can decide to leave you in your present condition because that's how he wanted you to be. John the Baptist was the greatest of all prophets. He was beheaded. He lived at the poorest of his generation. And yet when John died, when the disciples came to Jesus, Jesus said, among those born of women, there have risen now greater than John. And yet this was a man that people said that he was demon possessed. How could God live in such a state? The measure that proved that a pastor is successful right now is the number of people he has in his church and the kind of jet he flies. Hello. Hi. If you have massive people, you're a successful pastor. You have flight, come on, you're doing well. I read a book the man said that another pastor came to his church after the worship and everything. And the man was about to go, the man turned around and said, can I talk to you one minute stay here? The man shook him and said, God has proven his calling in your life. He asked the man, he said, why? He said, look at all this thing. He went back to his office. He was shocked. He said that was the last time he invited that man to his church. Because he just discovered this man had not measured him based on faith or his work with God. He's measuring it based on what he is saying. Whatever you can see is perishable. Whatever money you have today, you can lose it. There is no marriage that is immune to not cracking. But there is only one destination that when you miss that destination, you have missed everything. The Bible says that in the latter days, people will no longer endure some teaching. People will heap up people who will tell them what they want to hear. In your sickness, are you walking towards heaven? 
Somebody say, if I discover today that I have HIV, I have a better chance of going to heaven than you that doesn't have it. If I go to the hospital and doctor just turn around and tell me, I'm sorry, you have gotten a deadly disease. He said, I stand a better chance than you that doesn't have it. Because right now they have just told me, you have a limited time, and I need to go home and start working on how I will aim my destination. For some of you that are like, some people, when they were told that they have HIV, members of their family, everybody was living in health. Some of them have had accidents. They were not prepared for it. Why the man with the HIV is still pampering his sickness? Some people are still having accidents and they are dying instantly. They were never ready. They didn't see it coming. I want to ask you. This afternoon, can you defeat the very enemy that will take you away from the most important thing in your life? Can you defeat it? Some of us, we are in search of this world. When people die, they don't bury your house with you. They bury you. Hello? Because it is appointed not to man wants to die, and after that what? Judgment falls. What is it going to be? Your wife will not be buried with you. Even the children you are telling God, these children, they, they, they give me that they can cancel God. When you die, they will still be alive. They will just stand there and cry, mommy is gone, and throw sand in the grave, and they will continue to be alive. And some of them will repent on that place. When we were growing up, there was this, this movie we normally watch in crusade grounds about people who went for party and everything. And one day they went for a crusade ground. They went for a crusade. And they were in the group. After the message, the man of God called for a call. Some wanted to go. The other person said, ah, Why well, you, you want to go and disgrace yourself in front of all these people? But no worry. Just stay. Just hold on. Within five minutes, the other call was over. On their way home, the young man that wanted to go out for the other call, they had an accident. He died instantly. The other one that told him not to go ran back to the crusade ground and gave his life to Christ. I'm not going to blame him on the day. You gave your life for him to find out that death can happen at any time. When they carried the dead body, he ran back to the minister at the crusade ground and submitted his life to Jesus. But he has been the very reason why the dead brother never made it to the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to stand up. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor David, too, is not an exception to this. Amen. Amen. Hello. to us, only to turn around and God said, what about you? You. What about you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, on that day, many will come to me and say, didn't I cast demons in your name? And he will turn around and tell them, go away from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know. Probably this man have even brought people to Christ. And yet Christ will say, I don't know who you are. Whoever you are in the house, I want to ask you a question. What is it going to be? Are you going to turn back and walk away feeling sad because you feel that what you are asked to sacrifice to get eternal life is more important than eternal life? Come on, eyes closed. This is, can be, today can be your day of salvation. Today can be your day of salvation. Come on, your life may be in trouble, in crisis right now that you don't know what to do. But right now, all that is in your head is how to figure out how to deliver yourself, even though it means you're going to hell. 
you know you want to make that commitment to walk with God. I said, oh, eyes closed. I want to see you right now. You want to make that commitment. You, you are ready to let things go in order for you to come to God. I want to see you right now. There's a way I can say it. Bless you. Hallelujah. Raise your hand up. Raise your hand up. Listen, most of the gospels we are hearing in our pulpit today, they are from the pits of hell. We are men no longer feel guilt. When it's all about God blessing us, and no longer talking about our eternal salvation. If you raise your right hand up, I want you to put your right hand on your chest. I want you to take this minute to ponder. Will you be willing to let some things, even though they are important to you, go? That you may gain the most important thing in life. Oh, yes, Lord. She will raise your hand up. I want you to pray with me. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Today. 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 I have heard your word. I have heard your word. And I am receiving your word. And I am receiving your word. Because I know. Because I know. That eternal life is the most important thing for me. Therefore, my God, I don't want to fool myself. And I don't want to lie to myself. I come to you, Father. Saying, God, I am willing to let habits go. To let some friends go. To let some business go. That I may gain eternal life. Father, today, I acknowledge that eternal life is the most important thing for me. Today, I hand my life to you. To you. To you. To you. To you. In the name of Jesus. I confess my wrongs. And I repent. And I say, Father, come and take over. In the name of Jesus. Bring down your hands. For those of you who have raised your hand, please, I will ask you. 